Hi, myself, Dr. Raghavendra Reddy. Join us for an exciting chat with expert session with Dr. Angela Takano. Angela Takano is a director, senior consultant, anatomical pathology, Singapore General Hospital. Thank you. What is the role of the next generation sequencing uh, that is coming up in the ROSE sample for uh, uh, mutation analysis in uh, tumor? Yeah, so, so we do next generation sequencing, right? Like I said, so, but we do it uh, on, the, on the formalin fixed paraffin embedded uh, material. So um, the role of ROSE is, of course, when you have an immediate diagnosis right by you and you know the case is a non-small cell carcinoma or straightforward adenocarcinoma, you know you need to do additional studies such as EGFR, BRAF, et cetera. So in that case, at that point, you could allocate the material that you're going to send for your molecular analysis. So here, we don't send this material straight to the molecular lab, right? We process it here, and then we send either the block, the, the shavings, uh, uh, the material that has been pre-processed. So it all depends on how your setup is, for example. So if you have a setup such that you don't do the molecular analysis yourself and you could have an arrangement with the laboratory that does the next generation sequencing and they want to process this material directly from, for example, a fresh sample that you took, then uh, you could arrange it in that way with ropes. But of course, if you put your material into saline, it has to be processed immediately. So it's not recommended unless you have the setup near you. Mo in most of the, uh, of the uh, histopathology laboratories, all the material is pre-prepared uh, in the histopathology department before it's sent to molecular testing. So still the use of rows uh, in this process is to determine how much more material you're gonna need and maybe communicate with the pulmonologist and say, well, you have here a smear, which we could scrape, for example, and get one test out of it, because that's what we can do here at SGH. We can scrape the cytologic material and get an EGFR out of it, but you still need more tests, right? For example, I showed you, you need ALK, ROS, RED, and for that, you need a block of, uh, of tumor to be cut and be sent to the cytogenetics material. So the, the, the role of, of ROS is always to uh, kind of uh, feedback the pulmonologist as to what are the additional needs of tissues that need to be allocated for the different studies. And um, what is your experience on uh, EBUS uh, gene expert negative but later culture coming out to be positive? Like uh, many a times it delays the diagnosis because the culture later turns out to be positive and the initial gene expert turns out to be negative. Yeah, I, I don't have that experience. I don't know. So the, the, what we do here sometimes is um, uh, they normally send directly to the microbiology lab the fresh specimen uh, in case of suspicion of TB. But when it was not sent directly and it turns out that we have a granulomatous inflammation, it's possible TB, but we can never find the acid fast bacillus and we cannot prove it, our pulmonologists and our clinicians, even our microbiologists have asked us to do, to extract um, uh, DNA from our samples and send for gene expert. But actually, I don't have the actual numbers, but I think the yield is very low. Yeah. And um, um, like, what is your uh, take on a pulmonologist performing a rose, uh, which they promoted as P rose, like, Okay, so the, yeah, it is possible, but it requires some training. And um, as I said before, it depends a lot on the type of uh, smears that you can produce. So if you learn how to produce very good smears that are not clotted, that are uh, thinly smeared, and you, and you have some training on the morphology, you could do a basic thing. You could maybe be able to determine if you have a, uh, a malignancy first, right? Then uh, 
a small cell carcinoma versus a non-small cell carcinoma also could be. I have to say that these are these these steps uh, signify an incremental uh, difficulty, really. You know, because the stain that is used. Now that's the other thing. The stain that is used for rose is diff quick on an air dried, mostly diff quick on an air dried slide. You could use Papa Nicolau. Papa Nicolau is easier to interpret, but the problem with Papa Nicolau is it needs a little bit longer set of, uh, of stains and a longer time to prepare, but you could design a shortened Papa Nicolau, which we also have, but we don't do it for the rose. For the rose, we do the diff quick, which is just a fixative, an orange stain, uh, blue stain, which is the basophilic, and washing water. So the problem with the diff quick is that because the cells are air dried, uh, they become a bit swollen. So you have to be used to this type of morphology because it could be easily confused with malignancy by untrained eyes. So that's the problem. So if you want to do your own rose, I think you will have to train for quite a while, you know, I would say at least a year, maybe looking at slides and, uh, and also training on the type of stain that you're going to use because the interpretation of the diff quick is quite, um, it's quite different from uh, that of the PAP. So there are certain peculiarities of each stain. So the PAP is definitely easier to interpret. So, uh, so if, if you don't have a cytotechnologist or a pathologist to help you, it would be useful for a pulmonologist to learn uh, the morphology, maybe easier on a Papa Nicolau stain, I would say. Yeah. And uh, is it uh, possible to uh, buy rose to differentiate uh, uh, lymphoma from a reactive node uh, when you don't have flow cytometry immediately available? The yeah, the, the, the problem is maybe the only lymphoma that you would be able to maybe uh, be a little bit um, uh, confident to diagnose will be a diffuse large B cell lymphoma because basically what you get is uh, sheets of enlarged lymph nodes that are really definitely enlarged and atypical. But there are other lymphomas that are not 